の時まで聖杯もお預けだ Bradamante is a very familiar servant. If you ever used Parvati, then you'll have an idea on how she'll work. When compared to the other 5 star Lancers, attack is the 4th lowest, just higher than Enkidu, while HP is the 2nd highest, lower than Arush. NP gains are fairly consistent, gaining about 29% all around when starting with her arts. Even an art quick quick brave chain will give you roughly that amount, thanks to her high hits on her quick. Star gens are excellent for a Lancer, averaging around 20 stars with a buster quick quick. Bradamante is a very simple servant to use. Spam her NP, which is why her first skill helps with that roll, increasing her quick for NP damage and her arts for NP gains. With this skill, a brave chain, starting with arts, will generate roughly 32 to 34 percent NP. This will be the skill you'll prioritize. Second skill is a very simple survivability tool. Her third skill is a strong supportive ability, charging someone's NP by 20 percent, herself included if you want to, helping her with NP spam even further. This is one of the reasons why she's similar to Parvati. Both are quick AoE lancers that specializes in spamming their NPs to generate a lot of stars and potentially delay enemies from attacking with charm or, in Bradamante's case, stun both having a 60% chance in doing so. And going back to the NP battery skill, both can help someone charge 20% gauge, although Bradamante's is better since it doesn't reduce any of her own NP gauge. She also has a debuff cleanse attached to it. With an NP Quick Brave, she will generate around 40 stars or so, and as mentioned, there will be a 60% chance to stun, so that's always helpful. In terms of NP damage, it's towards the lower side, beating a rush, but is lower than Lancer Artoria. You'll typically use K-Scopes with her, but if you are using Bradamante for boss battles or CQs, then NP damage and NP gains are effective. Sometime in Summer is a good quick focus CE, which many players should have max limit broken. So Bradamante isn't a complex servant. Boosting both Arts and Quick will help with majority of her attacks. There are other options you can use, it honestly just depends on your support. Sumo, Black Girl for fast battles, some debuff boosting CEs to increase her stun chance, the list goes on, but generally, her NP is the primary focus, so that should be your focus. Obviously, Scotty is the primary support. I'm not going to talk about how they synergize with each other. You all know what Scotty does. Now, I do need to mention that a double Scotty setup alone is not enough for 3 term farming with Bradamante. What you'll need is a super scope, a way to charge her NP at least 20%, not counting her own skill, because she'll need that as well. Servants like Helena, Narrow Bride, Shakespeare, again, someone who can charge 20% NP that you can switch into, forcing you to use the plug suit. Another alternative is using the Hogwarts Mystic Code to charge 20%. You'll need that and her skill to charge NP gauge on waves 2 and 3. Bradamante lacks NP gaining buffs, so when comparing to, let's say, Parvati, even Valkyrie, who has higher hit counts on her Noble Phantasm, Bradamante falls below them within the Skadi system. Caster Gill is helpful since she benefits from his attack and arts boost. He also increases Star Gen as well. He'll also help raise her stun rate to 90%, which is almost guaranteeing you the debuff. Almost. Other quick supporters like Maid Alter, Wu, Osakabe, and so on are helpful. Again, Bradamante isn't reinventing the quick meta. Needless to say, if you have your own Skadi, you'll use her majority of the time. Uncreative? Yes, but realistic. Unless you're just messing around or something. Bradamante literally has one job. Use her MP as fast and as much as possible. In terms of offensive servants that synergizes with her, Enkidu is phenomenal. Both are quick lancers. Enkidu having three normals, you'll generate a lot of stars with their attacks. If you are facing a divine enemy, then you're going to stunlock them quite frequently with their combined NPs. I guess uh, she also mentioned that she works well with Parvati as well if you are facing a bunch of archers. Both can give each other NP gauges or just work together with a lot of synergy. Bradamante is overall a good lancer. She has a job and she does well in it. A thing to take note of is that her skill cooldowns are low, even her guts and targetable NP battery, which makes her consistent. She can generate a lot of stars, but a major problem is that she lacks any crit damage buffs to really take advantage of those stars. You can have a support to help her out or give her a CE, but lacking a skill that buffs crits really takes away any high damage potentials. On the plus side, she has pretty good survivability, second highest HP, a defense buff with her guts which revives 3k HP, it's not as amazing, let's say, compared to Arush, who has the highest HP and invincibility skill, but it's better than normal. The biggest comparison, as you know, is with Parvati, as mentioned multiple times. They are very similar, but has some differences that separates them. For one, Parvati is top tier and better with Skadi. 
but Bradamante has higher damage since she is a 5 star after all, and of course, survivability is superior. Even their NP charge skill is different, Bradamante having the superior skill since there is no demerit, which as a reminder, you cannot activate Parvati's third skill unless she has a minimum of 10% NP, but I will say Parvati's Noble Phantasm charging everyone's NP gauge is phenomenal. If you watch my top SSRs you should summon in 2021, the Vinci Rider is recommended because her NP can charge everyone's Noble Phantasm gauge while easily spamming her own attack. Parvati basically has a mini version, but still a powerful cycle of skills. When compared to Bradamante's NP, she doesn't offer such high level support. So the question is, should you summon Bradamante? I mentioned she was good, but she's also not necessary to waste Saint Quartz on. If you get her, then you'll find her uses in battle, but she can spook you after all, so keep that in mind. From a gameplay perspective, it's not worth it. This is even more so if you already have Parvati, which in my opinion, is slightly better even though she's a 4 star. I'm going to summon for Bradamante, or try to summon her, but comment down below to tell me if you're going to get her, cause true men of culture would. Special thanks to all my patrons and sponsors. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon or channel membership. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Fates content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and join my Discord server. All links are in the description. Have an awesome day, everyone. Till next time.